on a distant, rugged planet, where the skies stretched out in strange hues and the wind carried the eerie calls of unseen creatures, humans had carved out a fragile existence. Their colony was perched on the edge of the Kratar territory, a wilderness inhabited by creatures that most humans feared to their core. The Kratar were said to be merciless, violent, and uncontrollable, a threat that hung over the settlers like a storm cloud. Conflicts between the humans and these alien beasts were all too common, each clash reinforcing the belief that the two could never coexist peacefully. But Lena, an eight-year-old girl living in the colony, didn't see the world the same way as the adults around her. While the others were cautious, fearing every shadow beyond the colony's borders, Lena felt only curiosity. It wasn't that she didn't know the dangers— the warnings had been drilled into her every day since her older brother had been killed in a Kratar raid, but something deep within her drew her toward the unknown. Maybe it was the way the other children never talked about the Kratar as anything but monsters. Maybe it was the loneliness she felt after her brother's death, a void that even her overprotective parents couldn't fill. Lena's father was one of the colony's defense commanders, a man hardened by loss and responsibility. Since her brother's death, He'd grown even more distant, his mind preoccupied with protecting the colony and avenging the losses they had suffered. He had forbidden Lena from wandering near the Kratar's territory, knowing all too well what could happen if she got too close. But no matter how many times they told her to stay inside the safe zones, her feet always seemed to find their way past the invisible line that divided safety from the unknown. One day, as Lena ventured farther than she ever had before— she stumbled upon something that made her heart skip a beat. It lay half-hidden beneath the tangled brush, breathing heavily, its large body rising and falling with each strained breath. A Kratar, but not like the fearsome warriors she had heard about in the colony's tales. This one was young, not much older than a cub, its dark, leathery skin marked with deep wounds. Its eyes were barely open, glazed over with pain and exhaustion. It was alone, clearly separated from its pack, and on the brink of death. Lena's first instinct was to run. Her heart pounded in her chest, and for a moment she heard her father's voice in her head, warning her about the dangers of these creatures. But as she watched the Kratar struggle to breathe, something inside her shifted. It wasn't the terrifying monster everyone had described. In fact, it looked vulnerable. Weak. Almost sad. She took a hesitant step forward, her small hands trembling at her sides. The creature's eyes flickered, its head turning ever so slightly toward her. It bared its teeth weakly, but there was no real threat behind the gesture. It didn't have the strength to attack, and Lena knew it. For a long moment, they stared at each other, human and alien, predator and prey, but something unspoken passed between them. Lena slowly crouched down, her curiosity overpowering her fear. She knew it could be a terrible mistake, but she couldn't bring herself to leave it behind. Gently, Lena reached out and touched one of the Kratar's wounds. The creature flinched, letting out a low, rumbling growl, but it didn't lash out. Instead, it seemed to accept her presence, almost as if it understood that she wasn't there to harm it. Lena's fingers, small but steady, brushed over its leathery skin, feeling the heat of its body as it fought against the pain. She didn't have much to offer, a small water pouch, a bit of dried food she had brought with her for the day, but she laid them down in front of the creature, watching as it weakly sniffed at the offering. The Kratar hesitated, then slowly lapped up the water. Lena couldn't help but smile. It wasn't much, but it was a start. She knew she couldn't stay long. Her parents would notice her absence soon but she wasn't ready to leave it just yet. Carefully, she gathered some nearby plants and did her best to bandage one of the creature's wounds, using the leaves the way her mother had taught her when she had scraped her knee. The Kratar closed its eyes, letting out a deep, rattling sigh. It wasn't in pain anymore, or at least not as much. Lena sat beside it, her legs folded beneath her, watching the creature breathe. She could hardly believe what she was doing. It was the kind of thing she'd heard about in bedtime stories, not real life. But there she was, sitting next to an injured Kratar, the kind of creature that had haunted the colony's nightmares for as long as she could remember. Time passed, and the sun began to dip below the horizon, 
casting long shadows over the alien landscape. Lena knew she had to go. If she didn't make it back before dark, her father would come looking for her, and if he found her here, with this creature. She didn't want to think about what he would do. With one last look at the crotar, Lena stood up and took a step back. The creature opened its eyes again, watching her with a strange intensity. For a moment, Lena thought she saw something like understanding in its gaze. I'll come back, she whispered, more to herself than to the creature. I promise. And with that, she turned and ran back toward the colony, her heart pounding in her chest, her mind racing with thoughts of what had just happened. She didn't know what it all meant yet, but something told her that this was only the beginning. Lena returned the next day, her heart pounding with the mixture of fear and excitement that had lingered since their first encounter. She wasn't sure if the Kratar would still be there, or if it would remember her kindness. When she reached the spot where she had left it, her breath caught. The creature was still there, but it was watching her now, its dark eyes following her every move. It didn't growl or flinch this time, but its muscles were tense, as if unsure whether she could be trusted again. She knelt a short distance away, carefully pulling out the small supplies she had brought, more food, clean water, and a basic first aid kit her mother had left in their home. The Kratar's wounds were still raw, and though it was healing, it clearly needed more time. Lena had learned a little about treating injuries from watching her parents after they returned from the colony's defense efforts and she hoped those lessons would help. She moved slowly, avoiding any sudden gestures that might alarm the creature. As she worked, she spoke to it in a soft, soothing voice. She didn't know if it understood her words, but the sound seemed to calm it. There were moments when it would twitch, a low growl rumbling in its throat, and Lena would pause, holding her breath until the tension passed. The beast didn't attack, though, and gradually it seemed to accept her presence. It was during these quiet moments that Lena began to notice things she hadn't before. The way the Kratar's eyes would flick toward her as if trying to make sense of her actions. The way it responded to her voice, not with hostility, but with a sort of cautious curiosity. There was something more in those eyes than mindless aggression. The more time she spent with it, the more she realized that this creature wasn't the monster she had been led to believe. It was intelligent, more than she could have imagined. As the days passed, Lena's visits became routine. Each time, she would bring food and water, treating the beast's wounds with the same care she would have for any creature in need. The Kratar, once wary and on edge, began to relax in her presence. Its movements were slower, less defensive. It no longer growled when she approached, and once or twice, Lena thought she saw something like gratitude in its gaze. One day, as Lena knelt beside the creature, Carefully applying a makeshift bandage, something unexpected happened. The Kratar, watching her closely, shifted its weight and nudged her hand with its nose. It was a gentle, almost tentative gesture, but it left Lena frozen in surprise. She had never expected this, a sign of trust, maybe even affection. Slowly, she reached out and placed her hand on the creature's head. It didn't pull away. There were still moments when the Kratar's instincts would flare up, moments of tension where Lena would be reminded of the danger she was in. But those moments grew fewer as the days went on, replaced by something neither of them fully understood. The Kratar, who had likely never encountered kindness from a human, seemed confused by Lena's actions. It couldn't grasp why she continued to help, why she treated it with care when its own kind had abandoned it. For the first time, the audience is given a glimpse into the Kratar's thoughts. It wasn't just an animal acting on instinct. It was capable of feeling, of questioning, even of forming connections. Despite the growing trust, Lena knew she couldn't tell anyone about the Kratar. Her parents would never understand. They saw the creatures as nothing but a threat, a danger that needed to be eliminated. The colony had suffered too much at the hands of the Kratar and any suggestion that these creatures were more than savage beasts would be met with disbelief or anger. And so, Lena kept her secret, slipping away whenever she could to be with the creature. But secrets don't stay hidden forever. As Lena's visits became more frequent, her parents began to notice her absences. They didn't say much at first, assuming she was just exploring the safer areas around the colony. 
But one evening, as Lena prepared to leave, her mother stopped her, concern etched on her face. Where have you been going, Lena? she asked, her tone gentle but firm. Lena hesitated, her mind racing for an excuse. Just around. By the cliffs. I like the view there. Her mother's eyes narrowed, not entirely convinced. It's dangerous out there, you know that. The Kratar have been more active lately. Lena nodded quickly, trying to brush off the warning. But inside she felt a knot of fear tightening. The colony's defense forces were preparing for something, she could feel it. The tension between the humans and the Kratar had been building for weeks, with more skirmishes breaking out along the borders. If they discovered the creature she had been helping, they wouldn't hesitate to kill it. The thought made her stomach turn. She couldn't let that happen. The Kratar had saved her once already. A few days ago, while she was out gathering plants near their meeting spot, a wild creature had appeared, something vicious and fast. Lena hadn't even had time to react before it lunged at her. But before it could reach her, the Kratar had stepped in, tearing the predator apart in a matter of seconds. It had been a moment of pure, raw instinct, but it had saved her life. And in that moment, Lena knew that the bond between them was real. It wasn't just about survival. The Kratar had chosen to protect her, just as she had chosen to help it. The incident had only deepened her determination to keep the creature safe, no matter the cost. But the more she tried to hide her friendship with the Kratar, the more difficult it became. Her father, always sharp and observant, began to grow suspicious. He questioned her more often, his tone growing harsher with each passing day. And though Lena did her best to keep her secret, she knew it was only a matter of time before someone found out. As Lena continued to care for the Kratar, she couldn't shake the feeling that something big was coming. The air in the colony was thick with tension, whispers of an impending conflict spreading among the settlers. The Kratar were preparing for something, too. She could see it in the way the beast tensed whenever distant noises echoed through the wilderness. They were both caught in the middle of a war either of them wanted, a war that seemed inevitable. Each day that passed brought Lena and the Kratar closer, their bond growing stronger with every shared moment. But as the outside world grew more dangerous, Lena knew that their fragile peace was hanging by a thread. It wouldn't take much for everything to come crashing down. Tensions within the colony had been simmering for weeks. The Kratar were growing bolder, or at least that's what everyone believed. Skirmishes along the border were becoming more frequent, and every attack seemed to stoke the colony's anger further. There was talk of a full-scale war, whispers that the only way to ensure the colony's safety was to strike first and end the threat once and for all. Fear and mistrust fueled these conversations, and it wasn't long before action followed. Lena's father, always stoic and focused, had taken on a more prominent role in the colony's defense efforts. As one of the top officers, he was responsible for planning the next move, and the tension in his voice whenever he spoke to Lena or her mother was palpable. He spent long hours in the command center, meeting with the other leaders, discussing strategies for a preemptive strike against the Kratar. The consensus was that the Kratar weren't just a danger, they were a looming catastrophe. Their numbers were growing, their attacks more coordinated, and it was only a matter of time before they launched a full-on assault on the colony. Lena listened to her father's grim talks with a heavy heart, knowing more than anyone else in the colony that things weren't as black and white as they seemed. The Kratar were not mindless beasts. She had seen it, experienced it firsthand. But she couldn't tell anyone. How could she, when every person in the colony believed they were on the brink of war with monsters? The bond she had formed with the Kratar beast weighed on her more heavily as the conflict between their species intensified. She visited the creature in secret whenever she could, though it was becoming more dangerous with every passing day. The creature was healing well now, strong enough to stand and even roam a little, though it stayed close to the spot where Lena had cared for it. It seemed to sense the rising tension, too. Its body was more alert, its eyes scanning the horizon whenever a distant noise echoed through the wilderness. Lena wondered if it knew what was coming. One afternoon, as she was preparing to leave for another visit, her father stopped her. His face was grim, his voice colder than usual. Where do you keep going, Lena? She had prepared for this moment, 
but now that it was here, panic surged through her. She fumbled for an excuse, anything to deflect his suspicions, but it was too late. He had noticed the pattern, her frequent absences, the way she avoided eye contact whenever he mentioned the Kratar. I? I've just been exploring. Around the cliffs? She lied, her voice weak. Her father's gaze hardened. Do you know what's happening, Lena? We're about to go to war. The Kratar are preparing to attack us. And you've been wandering off, out of the safe zones. You know how dangerous that is. She swallowed, her heart racing. She wanted to tell him the truth, to explain everything, but she couldn't find the words. Her father's mind was already set, clouded by the belief that the Kratar were nothing but a threat. I'm sorry, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Her father didn't respond for a long moment. When he finally spoke, his tone was harsh, clipped. You're not to leave the colony again. Do you understand? If I find out you've been anywhere near their territory. He didn't finish the sentence, but the warning was clear. Lena nodded, tears stinging her eyes. She wasn't just being grounded. This was a direct order, a barrier between her and the creature she had grown to care for. But her father's suspicions didn't end there. A few days later, he followed her, though she didn't know it at the time. She had slipped out, determined to check on the Kratar, her heart heavy with the knowledge that her visits might be coming to an end. When she arrived at the usual spot, the creature was there, waiting, as if it knew she would come. Lena knelt beside it, whispering soft words, her hand gently brushing over its smooth, leathery skin. But she wasn't alone. Her father had seen everything. He emerged from the trees, his face a mask of shock and anger. For a moment, he was too stunned to speak, his eyes locked on the creature, this supposed monster, this thing that had taken his son's life. And there was his daughter, his little girl, sitting beside it as if they were friends. Lena! His voice was sharp, cutting through the air like a blade. She jumped to her feet, her heart pounding in her chest. Dad, I can explain. Step away from it, he commanded, his hand reaching for the weapon at his side. No, you don't understand. It's not like they say, it's not a monster, it's, it's just hurt. It's not dangerous. Her father's expression darkened. It's a Kratar, Lena. You don't know what they're capable of. You've been manipulated. Lena's stomach twisted in fear. No, that's not true. It saved me. It could have killed me, but it didn't. But her father wasn't listening. His mind was made up, and the sight of his daughter so close to the creature he had sworn to fight only deepened his resolve. He pulled her away from the beast, his grip firm and unyielding. If I see it near the colony again, I'll kill it, he said, his voice cold, final. Lena's heart shattered. She had tried so hard to keep her secret, to protect the creature but now everything was falling apart. She was forbidden from leaving the colony, watched more closely than ever, and her father's threat hung over her like a dark cloud. The Kratar, sensing her absence, began to venture closer to the colony's borders. It didn't understand why Lena had stopped visiting, but it felt the growing distance between them. And so, it wandered, its instincts pulling it toward her. It didn't know the dangers it was walking into. The Kratar had never fully grasped human behavior, but it was driven by something deeper, something that bound it to the girl who had saved its life. Meanwhile, the human colony was preparing for war. Weapons were being readied, soldiers trained, and strategies discussed. The Kratar, too, were preparing. They had sensed the humans' growing aggression, and they knew a confrontation was inevitable. Both sides were moving toward the brink of destruction— either fully understanding the other's motivations. As the colony's forces gathered, Lena's father took his place at the front of the line. He was ready to lead the offensive, to protect his people, but in his heart, he was conflicted. He couldn't shake the image of his daughter with the Kratar, couldn't understand how she had seen something in the creature that he never could. But it didn't matter now. The time for questions had passed. The Kratar, on the other hand, stood ready to defend their territory. The beast that Lena had cared for, now healed and strong, lingered at the edge of the battlefield, caught between two worlds. 
It didn't know where Lena was or what was happening, but it sensed the danger, the tension, and it braced itself for the coming storm. The humans were advancing, and the Kratar were waiting. Both sides, blinded by fear and misunderstanding, were about to clash in a way that would change everything. The moment of reckoning had arrived. The air was tense as the colony's forces gathered, preparing for what was meant to be a decisive strike. The Kratar had been deemed too dangerous, their numbers growing, and the threat they posed to the human settlement couldn't be ignored any longer. Lena's father stood at the head of the operation, a grim determination on his face. He had always been a man of action, especially after the death of his son. For him, this wasn't just a battle for survival, it was personal. The loss had hardened him, leaving little room for doubt or hesitation. Now, with the colony's fate seemingly hanging in the balance, he believed that this attack was their only option. Unbeknownst to the rest of the colony, Lena had been caught in the center of something far more complex. Her bond with the Kratar beast, once an injured and vulnerable creature she had helped, was now stronger than ever. But she had kept this secret from everyone, knowing that no one, least of all her father, would understand. To them, the Kratar were the enemy, ruthless and feral. To Lena, they were something more, something misunderstood. As the colony soldiers prepared for battle, Lena watched with growing dread. She had been forbidden from leaving the colony walls after her father discovered her secret meetings with the creature. She had tried to explain, to tell him that the Kratar weren't what they thought, that they were capable of more than violence. But he wouldn't listen. In his eyes, the creature had manipulated her, and any further contact with it would be dangerous. His words had been final, and Lena had been left powerless. The Kratar, on the other hand, were also preparing. Though they didn't fully understand human intentions, they could sense the tension in the air. The attacks from humans had become more frequent, more aggressive, and the Kratar were not ones to stand idly by. They were a proud species, and the idea of retreat or submission was foreign to them. The creature Lena had cared for was no longer the helpless, wounded beast it had once been. It was strong now, its wounds healed, and it had grown more confident. Yet, it was confused by Lena's sudden absence, wandering closer to the human colony in search of her. As it neared the borders, the Kratar came face to face with human patrols, and the encounters were anything but peaceful. The beast held back from attacking, but the humans, seeing it as a threat, opened fire, forcing it to retreat into the wild. Each skirmish only heightened the tension between the two sides, both preparing for an inevitable confrontation. The humans were convinced that the Kratar were organizing for a full-scale assault, and the Kratar believed that the humans had already declared war on them. Lena felt trapped between these two worlds. She knew the Kratar were not the monsters her father believed them to be. She had seen their intelligence, their capacity for loyalty and even kindness. But how could she convince anyone else of that, especially when both sides were preparing to tear each other apart? As the colony's forces gathered for the final offensive, Lena knew she had to do something, but she didn't know what. The day of the attack arrived, and the colony's forces set out, armed to the teeth and ready for battle. Lena's father led the charge, his face hardened with resolve. He was determined to end the threat once and for all, even if it meant wiping out every last Kratar in their path. The troops moved through the dense wilderness, their weapons raised, their eyes scanning the landscape for any sign of the enemy. At the same time, the Kratar were preparing their own defense. They could feel the humans approaching, their presence like a storm brewing on the horizon. The creature Lena had bonded with stood at the front, its eyes scanning the trees, searching for any sign of her. It didn't fully understand the conflict, but it knew that something terrible was about to happen. And it knew that Lena was in danger. As the two forces neared each other, the tension was unbearable. The humans believed they were marching into enemy territory, ready to strike before the Kratar could launch an attack of their own. The Kratar, meanwhile, stood ready to defend their land from what they saw as an invasion. The stage was set for a battle that neither side truly wanted but both believed was inevitable. Then, in the midst of it all, Lena made her move. She couldn't sit by and watch as her father led his forces into a war that didn't need to happen. She had to stop them, even if it meant risking everything. 
Sneaking away from the colony, she ran toward the battlefield, her heart racing with fear and determination. She didn't know how she would stop the fighting, but she knew she had to try. As she neared the Crotar's territory, Lena saw the creature she had bonded with. It was standing at the edge of the battlefield, its body tense, ready to fight. But when it saw her, something in its posture changed. It recognized her, and in that moment, the bond they had formed became clear. It wouldn't attack. It wouldn't fight. Not if it meant putting her in danger. Lena stood between the two forces, her small figure dwarfed by the towering crotar behind her and the armed human soldiers approaching from the other side. Her father's voice rang out, ordering her to move, to get out of the way. But she didn't budge. She raised her hands, shouting for them to stop, to listen. She told them about the creature, about how it had saved her life, about how the Crotar weren't the mindless killers they thought they were. At first, no one listened. The soldiers held their weapons at the ready, unsure of what to do. But the creature, standing behind Lena, made no move to attack. It stood there, watching, waiting, as if it understood that this moment was crucial. Slowly, Lena's father lowered his weapon, his eyes locked on the creature. He didn't fully understand what was happening, but he couldn't deny what he was seeing. The battle that had seemed inevitable began to dissolve before their eyes. The Crotar, seeing the humans lower their weapons, held back. The humans, seeing that the Crotar weren't advancing, began to question their orders. In that moment of hesitation, the possibility of peace emerged, fragile but real. Lena had done it. She had stopped the bloodshed, if only for a moment. But the future was still uncertain. The peace between the humans and the Crotar was fragile, and it would take more than one act of bravery to maintain it. But for now, both sides stood down, reconsidering everything they had believed about each other. In the aftermath, as the humans and Crotar began tentative negotiations, Lena and the creature shared one final, quiet moment. They had changed the course of their worlds, and though the path ahead was uncertain, they had proven that peace, however fragile, was possible.